Well, thank you very much for the uh, opportunity of participating in this uh, uh, workshop today, although you've given me a challenging topic to address. I wanted to start by uh, providing my disclosures for the talk this morning. They're both cultural disclosures, uh, academic disclosures, and commercial dis disclosures, and they're shown on the slide here. So it has been said of biomarkers of sepsis that they are terrific answers, but we don't uh, know what the appropriate question is to ask. And I think this really applies uh, particularly to the whole concept of a biomarker of organ dysfunction. Uh, when we think of the uses of biomarkers in medicine, they really subserve three potential broad roles. They may uh, help us prognosticate. A biomarker may tell us uh, whether or not a patient with a particular disease is likely to have a favorable or uh, an unfavorable course. I suppose in talking about sepsis, sepsis we are talking about uh, the prediction of risk of organ dysfunction. But in part, that presupposes that we can do something about modifying that risk. And so, in many ways, the more important use of a biomarker is in diagnosis. Uh, the early recognition of an abnormal state that can be modified uh, to benefit the patient. And having done that, a biomarker may play a role in monitoring the response to therapy. And so in thinking about sepsis, we would be uh, interested in the resolution of organ dysfunction. Now, organ dysfunction, as it is defined in the third international consensus definitions uh, framework, is the outcome of sepsis. Sepsis is life-threatening organ dysfunction caused by a dysregulated host response to infection. It's not so much the disease as the consequence of the disease. And so it makes it uh, challenging to think about how we describe this process uh, in terms of biomarkers because of the fact we would be looking at biomarker uh, for a particular outcome. Now, what is the multiple organ dysfunction syndrome? Part of the challenge that we face in trying to describe it accurately with uh, biomarkers is that it's a very poorly characterized, though very dramatically expressed uh, clinical condition. In essence, it is physiologic insufficiency uh, necessitating some form of exogenous support associated with acute critical illness. And it can arise not only from infection, in which case we call it sepsis, but it can also arise through inf other inflammatory causes, pancreatitis, multiple trauma, and it can arise uh, as a result of iatrogenic injury in the process of supporting uh, physiologic dysfunction. And this is a particularly important concept because we conflate the physiologic derangement with the response to that derangement by the doctor. And we measure organ dysfunction both as the deranged physiology and as the response of the doctor. Uh, so for example, if you look at the sequential organ fa failure assessment score, you'll see that the six systems described uh, are described partly in terms of physiologic dysfunction, the defect in oxygenation that is reflected in the uh, PO2 FiO2 ratio or the increase in bilirubin that's uh, uh, a marker of hepatic dysfunction. But it's also described as what the doctor does to treat this. The provision of excess oxygen uh, for respiratory support, uh, the use of vasopressor agents to support uh, cardiovascular dysfunction. And the problem here, of course, is that this is not as a state of the patient, it is a decision of the doctor. And that decision may well vary uh, dependent on who the doctor is, where he or she is practicing, and what the current state of knowledge is about the potential harms associated with deranged physiology. Now, we've tried to get around the problem of describing organ dysfunction as the need for therapy uh, in the multiple organ dysfunction score, but even here, uh, it doesn't really accomplish uh, the same goal. The renal uh, marker, creatinine, can be altered by dialysis. The cardiovascular uh, parameter will be impacted by the use of vasoactive medications as well. The Glasgow Coma Scale uh, is impacted by the use of sedative agents. So we have this kind of intertwining of physiology that's deranged and a doctor's response to that deranged physiology uh, that makes the description of organ dysfunction uh, particularly challenging. It would 
appear obvious that if we could detect organ dysfunction at an earlier stage, that we could intervene and uh, benefit the patient. Uh, but sadly, we've not been able to document that that is the case. For example, um, urinary NGAL has been proposed as a marker, a biomarker of uh, renal dysfunction in uh, sepsis and acute illness. And here uh, is a meta-analysis of multiple studies of NGAL predicting the need for subsequent renal replacement therapy. The first thing you see here is that as a biomarker, uh, it's not all that uh, good. The uh, area under the uh, receiver operating characteristics curve is only just a little bit over 0.7, which really uh, is not precise enough to inform a clinical decision uh, such as starting renal replacement therapy. But there's an even more fundamental issue uh, at play here. These are data from the START AKI study that was recently uh, published uh, from the Canadian Critical Care Trials Group. START AKI uh, looked at the hypothesis that early institution of renal replacement therapy would benefit uh, critically ill patients. It studied close to 3,000 uh, patients in multiple countries around the world and found that when you looked at outcomes as survival at 90 days, there was no evidence that accelerated renal replacement therapy improved the outcomes for patients. So even if we have a marker that can predict progression to renal replacement therapy, it's not going to impact what we might do to change that course. Indeed, what was found in this study uh, and what is, I think, uh, a theme in many, many uh, fields in critical care medicine is that patients who had early replacement therapy had a higher incidence of adverse events associated with that therapy. And so when we're looking at a prognosticator of a treatment, uh, we have to uh, ask the question, does the treatment uh, significantly benefit the patient or are we simply changing uh, a physiologic variable? Now, this is complicated, but let's look at the use of a biomarker in oncology. Um, HER2 nu is a protein that's expressed on uh, certain breast cancers. About a third of breast cancers uh, express it. It is the uh, uh, epithelial cell growth factor receptor, and it can be targeted by a drug called Herceptin. Women who express HER2 nu have an increased risk of distant metastasis and an increased risk of dying of their breast cancer. But oncologists don't measure her too new because they want to predict whether a woman is going to live or die from her breast cancer. They use it to guide the decision about starting her septum therapy because it is clear that her septum therapy can alter that uh, trajectory and uh, improve the ultimate uh, prognosis of survival. So it's that kind of conceptualization that I think we need to incorporate into thinking about biomarkers of sepsis or organ dysfunction, not simply uh, approaching them as descriptors that are associated with adverse outcome. What it means in organ dysfunction is that we need to have a better understanding of what is behind this deranged physiology so that we might intervene earlier not to correct the physiology, but to correct the process that leads to that deranged physiology. And that could be alterations in innate immunity, it could be oxidative injury, it could be an increased infectious risk because adaptive immunity is impaired, it could be abnormal host microbial homeostasis leading to an increased risk of infection, it could be altered apoptosis, endothelial dysfunction, or even uh, reprogramming of cells at a fundamental metabolic level. Now, there are studies that show that in fact some of these processes are going on and contributing to organ dysfunction. This was an uh, animal study looking at uh, the uh, potential role of um, injurious mechanical ventilation in producing kidney injury. And the slides at the bottom are from a separate study, but what they show is uh, apoptotic cells in the kidney, uh, which are a consequence of uh, injurious uh, ventilation of the lung. Uh, the study above uh, shows that this process uh, seems to develop during sepsis, but not as a direct consequence of intratracheal uh, installation of uh, acid. And so, in a sense, this might be a marker of a process that could potentially be modified. But obviously, the 
distance from uh, experimental evidence of um, a marker showing a, a process that might be modified to applying this in a critically ill patient is an enormous one. So just to conclude, I think organ dysfunction in sepsis is an outcome, and in thinking of a biomarker, we want a biomarker not so much to predict that outcome, but to provide insight into the processes that uh, lead us to that outcome. And this is difficult because the biological basis of organ dysfunction is complex uh, and poorly understood, and beyond this, it lies not just in deranged biology, it also uh, lies in variability in clinical practice that can exacerbate or at times improve uh, the uh, risk of developing organ dysfunction. And so when you put all of this together, I think the concept of um, having a biomarker of organ dysfunction in sepsis really is premature and begs the question, uh, what exactly is the question we are trying to ask? Thanks very much for your attention to this talk.